Hi everyone and welcome to my weekly Wednesday Facebook Live. I'm Michelle Tam of Dominon Paleo and every Wednesday I come live from my kitchen to show you how to cook something. So today we are going to be making the latest recipe on my blog. It is my Instant Pot Korean Short Ribs and it's actually uh, a new version of an old classic recipe on my blog, my Slow Cooker Korean Short Ribs. But because I never use my slow cooker anymore and I only like to use my Instant Pot for stews, I converted it to an Instant Pot. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to throw it together, but it actually from start to finish probably takes like an hour and a half, so I'm not going to keep you guys on this whole time. Um, but I'm going to show you how to throw it in um, and then it'll cook and I'll save it for another day. But I'm also going to show you how I reheat um, one that I've already made. So this is one I made the other day and I think stews always taste better uh, the next day. But first, before I go any further, I'm going to just uh, explain how things work on these Facebook Lives. So I want to be showing you guys how I cook things. I can't really um, read your comments because I'm, you know, demoing stuff. So Owen, my older son, will be reading questions out loud to me. And then behind the scenes, Lauren Wade, who's the master builder behind Nom Nom Paleo, will be typing answers to questions that I can't see. And also, um, just like we've done the last few times, we're gonna have a giveaway because I think it's always fun to give stuff away. So for three uh, viewers who are watching the live broadcast and who comment, just anything, you can say hi, you can ask a question, whatever you comment, everybody who comments during the live broadcast, um, three people will be randomly picked and they're gonna be um, winning something pretty cool. So what they're gonna win are, um, kind of a set of these silicone lids from GIR, um, which is a company I really like. They're, I think GIR stands for Get It Right, but these are all silicone. They are, I mean, it just basically makes any bowl, like a, like a, a container that you can like store food in, which is amazing. So it seals, um, you can put it in the microwave, they're heat stable, I mean it's it's pretty awesome. And so also, I love their spatulas and people are always asking me what spatulas I use. So we're also giving away um, the ultimate spatula, which is what I use for everything. And then the little mini flip, which is how I make my eggs. Um, they're not a sponsor, <laughs> in fact, I just emailed them today and said, hey, you guys wanna do a giveaway? because I love your stuff and I want people to know about it and so that is what we're doing. So near the end of the broadcast, we are going to pick the three live winners um, and everybody is eligible this time. Uh, so I'm gonna just start. So this is a batch of the uh, Korean short ribs that I made yesterday and they've been in the fridge. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because I actually think all stews and especially this one tastes better the next day because I think the flavors have time to meld. And then in terms of reheating, it's really, really easy and fast, um, which I'll show you right now. And also one thing that people always complain about with short ribs is that it's so fatty and like, you know, if you make it fresh, there's normally kind of like a, a good half inch of um, kind of grease on the top. And I'm not fat phobic at all, um, but I do think that gravies taste a little better when it's not super fatty and plus, the meat is nice and marbled, so there's plenty of fat, even if you scrape off the top. So what I like to do is I like to refrigerate this um, at least overnight. You can keep it in your fridge for four days and you can freeze it probably up to um, three months. But once um, it's been cold, you literally can just scoop out the top layer of fat and it comes right off. And because you know there's still fat in the meat, um, there's still gonna be fat in there, um, especially after you cook it. Um, but basically, I just kind of go around. Oh my gosh. Hello, Ollie. You know, I, I don't know if you guys know this, but we have a new baby in our house. A new hamburger baby. Ollie and that's just, uh, I, that's just gross. Okay, so I'm just going around. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna slowly scoop out all this fat, but as I kind of break out the pieces of meat. Oh, and like if the bone comes out, I just take it out because it only kind of takes up space after it's been cooked. And so I'm just gonna take off the fat and then I'm gonna plop in the meat and all of the gelled um, cooking liquid in here. So uh, where do you get like those tin storage containers? Oh, see, these are made by Lunchbots, but they don't make these ones anymore. Now they have these really cool circular clicks 
they don't make these rectangular ones. Ooh. <laughs> so I'm gonna just kind of break off the fat. I know I'm using my hands, but my hands are clean. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all gonna be cooked under high pressure. So even if they weren't super clean, it would be okay. And so again, I'm just gonna plop it in. I'm gonna take off all this extra fat. But you can see here, because um, short ribs um, have a ton of um, collagen in them. The sauce is really is super jello. So, so gonna, um, mm -hmm. do you uh, use the discarded fat for anything? I don't. People ask me all, all the time, and I know some people cook with it, but I I I, I don't. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna plop this in. That's pretty good. I'm not gonna be super. Oh, I should probably wipe that before. So I'm gonna just plop this all in, and I'm gonna put the liquid. And see here, it's nice. And uh, um, so uh, Maria asks if you can cook. Wait, if you cook this recipe twice. If I cook this recipe twice, you mean for the demo, for this Facebook thing? Yeah. I'm not sure. Here, Maybe. Can you hand me a napkin, please? Thank y'all. Oh yeah, another question. Uh, where can you find short ribs at, like Korean markets or? Uh, you know, I get short ribs. These ones I bought at um, our neighborhood butcher um, at Belcampo Meat Company because they are an amazing meat company. It's all organic, all sustainable, all properly raised. Um, but you can get it, short ribs you can get at most stores. Um, the ones at a Korean market sometimes are cut uh, differently because they're cut for uh, Korean barbecue, and that is the flanken cut, where it's actually the thinner cuts where um, it's cut across the bone, whereas these, you can see there are bones under each piece, but it's cut, um, it's, it's cut like these big segments. I don't know how to, so this is called the English cut. Um, but I'm gonna just stick this in the Instant Pot after I've defatted it. And so I'm just gonna heat this up. So I think what a lot of people don't realize is the Instant Pot is a great way to reheat food too. Um, so all I'm doing, oh. Okay, so uh, Jed yes. asks why, like at Western supermarkets, why uh, the short ribs are really cut like very thick, but the uh, ones at Asian supermarkets are, are cut, cut thin. Yeah. Because they, in at Asian supermarkets, like a Korean market, they're normally grilled. And so they want them thin, and so they can just kind of grill them quickly and they'll cook through. Whereas um, most of the time, like for kind of Western preparations of short rib, it's cooked low and slow until the collagen breaks down. And so you want kind of a big meaty piece because it'll <laughs> cook down as you're cooking it. So the only thing you need to know about your Instant Pot, or the most important part, is you have to make sure the silicone gasket is, um, there are no problems with it, there are no cracks, and that it's well tucked in to that little metal casing. And then I'm gonna just stick this on. I'm gonna shut it. And then, because it's already cooked, I'm probably only gonna cook this under pressure for like five minutes. So there are millions they're not millions, but there are tons and tons of buttons here, but I don't care about almost any of them. Um, I press the saute button if I'm gonna be sauteing anything in here, which I'm not, because I just dumped it in cold. Um, but really, I just use my manual button, and then I use the plus and minus button to change it to whatever I want. So I'm just gonna cook this for five minutes under pressure. It takes about 10 minutes to get to high pressure, um, and then it's gonna cook for five minutes, and then I'm just gonna leave it. And it automatically changes to keep warm. And then that's that. So uh, where are you in the oil on your uh, new cookbook tour? Uh, I don't know, we haven't totally decided, but for sure we're gonna start in Portland. So I think these are the tentative cities and it can totally change, but tentatively I think it's Portland, Seattle, Denver, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Toronto, Chicago, DC, New York, New Jersey, Atlanta, Austin, Houston, Dallas, and then San Francisco Bay Area, of course, and I think LA. I think that's it. I don't know. I, I, think, I think those are kind of the ones that are, did I say Atlanta? I think Atlanta too. 
Um, but again, nothing set in stone. This is for our new cookbook coming out on August 1st, Ready or Not. Um, and we also have a cool wall calendar that's going to be a companion to uh, our Ready or Not cookbook. But anyway, so now I'm going to start from the beginning. Um, and I'm going to show you how to throw this dish together. Oh. But the reason I did this is hopefully by the time I'm done with this, um, that will be done with heating, and then I can show you uh, what the short ribs are. So I believe it was Mary who asked um, how long, wait, it might not have been, but I think it was, mm -hmm. um, how long your uh, silicone, silicone gaskets last. Oh, you know what? I think it's recommended that you replace them every two years. I have, you know, two or three backups because it's almost impossible to get the smell out. Um, so I normally have one for kind of smelly stuff like stews and bone broth and then another one if I have more delicate stuff but no matter what the scent can't really ever come out so I just have backup gaskets and I think Instant Pot recommends that they're replaced every two years uh, or if you see that the integrity is compromised somehow like if it's like super like if you it, it's not elastic anymore if you see any cracks it's time to change it and it's only like I think five or six dollars on Amazon so you should just have backups anyway so I also have backup inserts um, that's so you can see here I have an eight quart and a six quart and this is just for recipe testing purposes I really think for a family of four a six quart is more than enough um, and if you really needed a bigger one I almost feel like it's better to have two six quarts so, but that's just me. Go so ahead. where do you buy uh, your silicone gaskets? Online, on Amazon. I, I think I almost buy everything on Amazon. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to um, make the marinade because basically all this recipe that I do with this recipe is I'm going to salt and pepper the short ribs and then I'm going to blitz together a sauce and then I'm going to throw it in the Instant Pot and mix it together and set it to cook. Um, but I think I'm just going to do the marinade first because that's kind of the noisy part because I have to do it in the blender. You can do it in a food processor if you don't have a blender. It's okay if it's a little bit chunky. It's not that big of a deal. So basically I have three scallions that I just kind of roughly chopped in three. If you don't have a powerful blender or a powerful food processor, obviously you probably have to chop stuff up a little smaller. But this is a really powerful blender. So I have like a two inch piece of ginger. And if you guys saw my last Facebook Live or read our last uh, blog recipe with the wonton meatballs, I talked about how like the raw ginger um, has like an enzyme that will break down meat. In this case, it's okay because it's all going to get cooked together. And also it's this, like short ribs are a super, super tough cut. So even if it gets exposed to the marinade before it gets really hot, it's, it, won't, it won't get all mushy like ground pork well. So, mm -hmm. um... Sylvia asks, how many pounds of short ribs will you need to basically serve four adults? Oh, so this five pounds of short ribs will definitely feed six. I mean, I know there's bone and it doesn't seem a lot, but it's a really hearty cut. So I, I made this on Sunday to kind of test everything and we fed all four of us. So Henry and I and, and Owen all eat like adults and Ollie eats kind of like a a third of an adult maybe <laughs> um, and so we have had at least five or six meals from that and we are big eaters we don't eat like the teeny tiny piece of stuff but I think five pounds is plenty for six people so I'm gonna make uh, the marinade really quickly so I have the three scallions that I've chopped up a two inch piece of fresh ginger that um, I just chopped up and peeled so would this work with pork ribs uh, Probably. I think the cooking time would be less. I think if you do pork ribs, I think um, if you look online, you probably could cook it, I want to say like 20 minutes, but don't, I mean, Google it because I don't know right off the top of my head, but definitely pork ribs um, are faster. I'm going to have six garlic cloves that I'm just going to, that I've peeled. Um, and then I ask for a medium pear or apple pear, but I don't have any of that. <laughs> so I just have a Fuji apple that I just peeled and cut up. So is there like a recipe? Yes, there is a recipe. Just go to nomnompaleo.com. It is the latest recipe on there, or you can Google Instant Pot Korean Short Ribs, and I think Lauren will go and post it. But when I get off um, this live broadcast, I post all of the links to everything you guys ask in the description. 
hello, Ollie. Are you going to help to cook? So you, you know what? Ollie is our resident picky eater. So you like these? Mm -hmm. oh, that wasn't a leading question. <laughs> That, that's did, great. Did you like the did you like these short ribs? Yeah. Oh that's good. Okay. I thought these were like the oh, best. So I have a half a cup of coconut aminos. This is the brand I use, but I also use like the Thrive Market one and Coconut Secret. I mean it's weird now that there's so many brands available. And basically this is just um, a soy sauce substitute. So if you have a soy allergy or you have gluten sensitivity, um, or you're doing a whole 30 you probably need um, some coconut aminos to kind of approximate soy sauce. But it is sweeter than soy sauce, so if you want to use soy sauce, I would not use half a cup. I would probably cut that um, and use like two-thirds the amount. So when I cook with coconut aminos, I combine it with fish sauce to get kind of the right umami and the saltiness. So is this uh, recipe kind of like a galbi recipe? or No, not really. I mean, it has those flavors. But it's not, a, it's not like Korean barbecue. It is like, it's almost like if you had a stewed version of kalbi. So I'm going to put in half a cup of... Um, oh, uh, also, what is the difference between coconut aminos versus liquid aminos? I think liquid aminos is made with soy, like soybeans. Um, and coconut aminos is made from coconut sap. Um, so that's... That's the main difference. All right, so then I'm going to add a tablespoon of rice wine vinegar, and then two teaspoons of fish sauce. And my favorite fish sauce is Red Boat fish sauce. It, this does not make your dish fishy. It just makes it delicious. Trust me. And I'm not putting so much that it'll be fishy. Um, if you are new to uh, my blog and to my recipes, You'll be like, why does she put fish sauce in everything? And it's because it makes everything delicious. So this sauce is going to be sweet and savory and a little bit tangy from the rice vinegar. Um, but it tastes really good. It, it's, it's all, it's all, it'll all taste good. So Irene yeah. asks, what's your favorite coconut aminos brand? Um, I don't know. I like the Thrive Market one and I like this uh, Big Tree Farms one. It seems a little thicker. Um, it's a little more soy saucy. So, uh, without the fish sauce, would the, um, would the... Would it still taste still, good? Yeah. Yes, it'll still taste good. Just add a little more salt or a little more, um, coconut aminos. Um, it'll be fine. But it does taste better with fish sauce. And you can buy it for so cheap, like at Trader Joe's or a Thrive Market. And if you see it, you should buy it. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to blitz this. Did I not put this in? product and I actually don't even keep it in the fridge so let me show you what this looks like and then I'll salt and pepper the short ribs and then I'll pour this on top this is like a really great section so you can see here it's nice and smooth if you don't have a powerful blender and it's not that smooth totally okay it just needs to be like chopped up and pulverized so um do coconut another coconut because <laughs> question do they like taste like soy sauce Yes, it tastes like soy sauce, but it's a little sweeter. But it is a really, I think it's a good, it's a good approximation um, and has a lot of umami in it. So I think it's, I think it's a good substitute. Um, so what I have here is I have a tablespoon of salt um, and I use diamond crystal kosher salt. If you use a finer salt, uh, I would use half that amount because uh, diamond crystal kosher has bigger crystals and so that's why when I give a measured amount of salt, I really do specify the type and brand, not because I think it's healthier or anything, just because that's what I'm using. And if you're using my measurements, you need to use the same salt. So I'm just gonna add some freshly ground pepper to this. And I like to put it in a separate bowl so then I can just stick my fingers in it and I don't have to worry about contamination. So I have five pounds of short ribs here. These ones I bought at Bell Campbell Meat Company because they have I really do think they have like the best meat um, in the San Francisco Bay Area. 
And so I like to keep it on this butcher paper because then I don't have to clean another bowl. So I just put these here. So um, with diamond, sprinkle. sorry. No, um, go ahead. Well, would diamond crystal salt like also change it or like, like I mean the type of salt? What do you mean? Sorry. Um, um, like the, the flavor? Of, yeah, the type of salt. Uh, I don't think it changes the flavor per se. You just need to make sure you have the right amount of salt. Um, so if you're using a finer grain salt, use a half a tablespoon instead of one tablespoon. But again, salt is always very subjective. Um, so to me, one tablespoon and the amount of um, flavoring in the marinade makes this taste just right. But it might be different for other people. So I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna sprinkle on the salt and pepper. And in my original slow cooker recipe, which is also on my blog, because um, a lot of people are like, where do I find a slow cooker version if I don't have an Instapot? And it's linked right in the recipe, um, so you can easily access it. I think it tastes much better coming out of an Instapot and it's faster um, because, you know, you can, you can cook it in a fraction of the time, plus it doesn't get all dried out in the pressure cooker. And that's why when you watch shows like Top Chef or, you know, Master Chef and they are having like a quick fire or some sort of cooking competition and they make they need to make something delicious and fast like a braise or pork belly or something they always go for a pressure cooker I'm just gonna go and sprinkle the salt and pepper and what's nice about doing it on this butcher paper too is like you know how it's all on the butcher paper now I just rub it around so the pieces that don't have as much salt, you just rub them around, and that's it. All right, so now I'm gonna have to play like short rib Tetris to make sure it all fits. So I recommend everybody get a six quart um, instant pot because an eight quart. I don't know that most people need an eight quart, and it does take a while to reach high pressure. Um, like we did this, what time is it? Like, you know, 15 minutes ago, and it still hasn't reached high pressure yet. And so even though I say reheating takes five minutes, it takes however long it takes to reach high pressure. And the smaller one, the six quart, actually I think reaches high pressure faster. So I'm gonna actually just put a little bit on the bottom of the, of the so, pot. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, do you trim the fat or? No. Okay. Because, I mean, if there was like a giant hunk on it, I would maybe, but it's not. It'll be okay. Like I normally refrigerate my stew like I showed you guys when this Facebook Live started. And if you missed the beginning of the Facebook Live, always remember you can always rewind, you can rewatch all of these. Like if you're busy right now, you can um, go and then come back. So all I'm doing is I'm kind of just tossing these short ribs in the sauce that I kind of put in the bottom. Or you could like, you know, put them all in and then pour the sauce on top. But it's really important, I think, that the sauce reach the bottom of the Instant Pot because I don't know if any of you guys have ever gotten an error message on your Instant Pot where it says OVHT. And that means that it's overheated and something has like scalded on the bottom. And so as a protective measure, Instant Pot will give you an error message and you can't go on. Um, and that can happen because a lot of my recipes, I kind of try to minimize the amount of liquid that you add in because so much stuff gets released into this closed, um, you know, closed system that I don't want to add too much liquid because then it all gets diluted by all the meat juices and like whatever else gets released into the stew. But the problem with that is if the juices aren't released fast enough, your meat can sear and then you'll get that overheat um, error message. So I have a... Um... So my... So, sorry, sorry. So my whole thing is just make sure that there's some sauce at the bottom so it keeps it from burning. And so I'm just going to finish... I'm going to top it off with the liquid. Do you brown the meat uh, before? Nope. Okay. Oh, that's actually a good point. I'll talk about that. So in my original slow cooker version, um, I used to boil, here I'll, I'll wash my hands and I'll answer that question. So 
So in my original slow cooker version, I used to put all of the, um, oh see this is why I also have to put the door. You can just throw everything away, but now I have to wash my hands again. Um, <laughs> sorry. So in my original slow cooker version, I broiled all of the um, short ribs to kind of give it some color. But I really do think it's kind of an unnecessary step. It still tastes really good. And if you Google um, an article in the New York Times, so I read an article in the New York Times several years ago, and that kind of kept me from ever searing any meat before I put it in a braise. So John Doc Willoughby, who used to work, I think, for Cook's Illustrated, wrote this big article in the New York Times about whether or not you needed to sear meat before you put it in a stew or braise. And he came to the conclusion that they did all these blind tests and there was absolutely no difference. And so if that saves me a step, then I'm gonna save that step. So now all I'm gonna do with this. So you can see here that I, there is some liquid at the bottom because I actually put a little bit on the bottom initially and then I turned all the meat inside and then I topped it off with the rest of the liquid. But I've kind of like just fit them all here. So almost everything fits in a single layer on top and then I have one lying on the top. Um, so then I'm just gonna put the top on. You make sure the silicone gasket is in properly. Um, I'm gonna plug this in because you'll see that the Instant Pot actually has noises to tell you that you have so, um, locked it properly. Uh, I have a question. So yes? um, do you freeze? Uh, uh, is it okay if you freeze your uh, stew right after you're finished? Uh, yes, but you should let it come to like room temperature before you put it in the freezer or the fridge. Um, just because I think that if, I mean, there's just food safety issues if you put hot stuff into a fridge or freezer because then the center doesn't get uh, cold fast enough. So I'm just going to put this in. The, the um, silicone gasket is in properly. So apparently then, uh, there's some angry faces, but that, that's okay. Yeah, why are there angry faces? I don't know, whatever. Sometimes people are just angry and they just need to chill out because, you know, life is short. So I locked it right there and you can tell by that little song that it's locked. This little valve at the top, I'm making sure that it's pointed towards sealed. Um, and then now I'm just gonna program this. I'm gonna press the manual button and then I'm gonna press the plus sign until it goes to 45 minutes. So then I just kind of let it do its thing. Um, it takes about 15 minutes to reach high pressure and then it'll cook under high pressure for 45 minutes. And then when it's done, I just leave it alone because I want the pressure to come down naturally. And a lot of times people are like, how do you know when to let the pressure come down naturally and when do you do quick release? I think for um, tough cuts like short rib, that um, you know you're cooking a long time so that um, you know it gets tender. It's better to do the slow release because I think they've said that the texture of the meat relaxes or some, something like that. Um, but I'll show you that after it's been cooked and um, I'm reheating it, I normally just do quick release depending on how soon I need it done because it's already rested and it's, it's already tender. Um, but I think, I think that's that. That was pretty easy. See, that was all there is. And once this is done, because there's two more minutes there, um, I will plate it and show you guys how that is. But let me... So, um, how long do you uh, let it slow this for? Okay, so with a regular stovetop pressure cooker, uh, the natural release, that's what it's called when you just let the pressure drop naturally. In a stovetop pressure cooker, that normally takes about 15 minutes. But with an Instant Pot, it can take a long time, depending on how much stuff you have in there, because it is so well insulated, and the only place it releases heat and the pressure is these little silver parts right here on the lid. Um, so normally I let it go 25 minutes, 20, 25 minutes. I mean, 15 minutes is probably my minimum, and then if it's not fully released, then I just manually turn this and release it, which I'll show you how to do right there. Um, but the cool thing about this is like, let's say I have this tree heat, I've thrown it in there. Um, it can just sit there because it automatically converts to keep warm. And then whenever I'm ready to serve it, I can serve it. And I think the Instant Pot, the keep warm function is for like many, many hours. So if you don't want to make it ahead of time, 
You can throw everything in there in the morning. It'll cook over an hour and a half, you know, um, while you're away, but it just keeps it on warm. And while it's on keep warm, the pressure has dropped naturally. So when you come home, you can just serve it. But in that case, you'll have to skim off the fat yourself if you don't like fatty marinade. And that is telling me that this is ready. So the reason why I have this under my um, hood like this is because when I do uh, the quick release, which I'm gonna do now, I like to turn on my hood so it just takes all the air up. Um, so is this recipe on your app? This is on my app. Every new recipe, um, here I'll turn this up. So every new recipe that's my own recipe, we, aut we automatically <laughs> <laughs> add it to the app um, at no cost to you guys. So you just get new recipes all the time. So anyway, I'm gonna turn this back on because I want the vent on. And then I just turn this so that it's preventing. And so, as I was saying with the A cord, it takes longer to reach high pressure and it takes a long time to release pressure. So even, so when I've had it do naturally, sometimes it's like 45 minutes and it still hasn't released pressure. And then even with this quick release, you'll see that it's still, it's gonna, gonna, it's gonna vent for a little bit. All right, so let's see what question. Uh, oh, someone said that, Brenda says, I think the keep warm op option lasts for 10 hours. Yeah, so if you're gone all day, it's totally perfect. And so what I love to do is I love to, sometimes if I'm making something else, I will make a stew in my Instant Pot while we're eating dinner. And so it'll cook and do everything while we're eating dinner. And then it'll be done when I'm done with the dinner. And then I can put it away in my fridge and clean everything all at one time. Um, so I think the Instant Pot is really, really great for meal prep um, because it's just, I don't have to do anything. Like me just throwing that together, I mean, you saw that. It takes maybe five, 10 minutes. And then now it's just doing everything by itself. All right. So how many minutes did you set it for? 45 minutes for this. And depending on how big and thick your short ribs are, uh, once it's done, you can always, um, once, once you let it do the natural release for like 25 minutes and you turn, open the lid, just cook it. And if it's not tender, add another five to 10 minutes. It's pretty easy to keep. So look, it's still, still slowly. So uh, what is your app? What is our app? So we have an app for the iPhone and the iPad. And I think we released it in 2012. I mean, it was before we even put out a cookbook. Because at the time we thought apps were the cookbook of the future, and now we still love our app, um, and it's a cool app. But I don't know that the apps are the cookbook of the future. But it won a Webby, um, and it's it's a cool app. And what's cool about it is you can swipe through and see all the steps, and it's just a fun way to cook. So if you have the flank and short ribs, will um, that make the recipe turn out differently? Uh, if you have the flanking ones, which are the thinner, which are um, cut, I guess, against the bone and they're thin, like the ones for Korean short rib, um, you just, I don't think you need to cook it quite as long. Um, so instead of 45 minutes, maybe try 35 minutes. Um, but see, the, the thing about knowing the exact time, like the exact cooking times for stuff, I normally go and I look online, there are a bunch of tables, like I go to hippressurecooking.com, which is a great site for pressure cooking, and she has a bunch of tables on how long to cook things. But you also have to see how big the pieces are, um, because I think like short ribs do need a minimum amount of time to cook so that the collagen gets broken down, but the bigger the piece, the longer that takes. Oh, and here's, here's our app. So this is, this is our app inside. Um, oh, what's a good recipe to show? So, um, if and then you can see here, you just cook step by step. And then you have pictures for everything. You can turn it to the side. I don't know. We love our little app. All right. See, and it's still, it's, even though it's on quick release, it still hasn't completely released. So I'm gonna get a uh, big bowl. And then this is how I keep 
my cilantro in the fridge to keep it fresh for a long time. So it's in a glass of water, so it's kind of like how you keep flowers, and then I loosely cover it with a bag. Um, but this cilantro, I think, has kept green and perky for almost two weeks. I mean, I change the water every few days, but this is how you keep your cilantro from turning all like melty and brown and gross. All right, so this, ta-da! It went, the little thing dropped, so I'm gonna move this. And I'm not worried about moving it now at all because the pressure has been released. There's no high pressure thing. This is not under high pressure anymore. Like when this little knob drops, it tells you that it's totally safe. Um, and it also won't let you open it unless all of the pressure is released. So that is like another safety feature. So uh, if cilantro tastes like soap to you, what uh, should you sub? Oh, don't put it on at all. Like this is just a garnish that I'm putting on at the end. There's no need to add it if you don't like it. Just add like green onions and it'll taste delicious. All right. So then you can also see, I don't know if you guys know this. So the, the um, IP Duo Instant Pots have it so that you can stick the lid in the handle, but I'm just gonna move it. So these, so this batch right here is a batch of um, the shore ribs that I made last night. And if you scroll back to the beginning of this video, I took the fat off because it had hardened overnight in the fridge. And then I dumped them in any loose bones I discarded because there's no reason um, to have them in there. And then I just cooked it under high pressure for five minutes. But you could see that from the time I dumped it, look what time is it, 5.37? It probably took about 30 minutes anyway. Um, but I didn't have to do anything. I just like scraped off the fat, dumped it in, programmed it, and I can go about and do whatever I want. So I'm just gonna scoop this in here. I mean, you should always taste it for flavor. I will taste it for flavor. But I've been eating a lot of this lately, so I'm pretty sure this one's okay. And there's still a little bit of fat on the top. Like, so even though you scraped it all, as I told you before, there's still lots of fat in the meat. So if you absolutely hate it, you can skim it off, but I'm okay with it. So um, is there another cut of meat that you can use besides short ribs? You can, I think that's good. Uh, you can use, uh, I might add a little salt. Um, you could use cube chuck roast. Why are people calling? I think it's just, we should just ignore it. All right, so I'm gonna take out the short ribs. I think it's a telemarketer. All my friends know I'm on Facebook Live right now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And then if the bones fall off, I just chuck them. People always ask, like, can I use these bones? Um, to make bone broth and not really like these are really spent bones. I just chuck them So is it one rib per person? Yeah, I think one rib per person uh, is plenty like again. This is like Really hearty meat like it is um, It's nice and tender and it's not like it's a little bit um, Will make you pretty full and sometimes the kids kind of don't like kind of the gooey bits, but I tell them that's like the good stuff. Like everyone's paying all this money for like collagen powder and gelatin and stuff. Like this is natural gelatin and this is, this is really good for you. So I'm just gonna plop them in here. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of salt because I'm gonna add a little salt and pepper to this. So if you don't have time to cool the short ribs um, so the fat can separate, is there an easy way to strain it? Well, you can buy those like fat separator things. I don't use that. I just use, um, I just use like this, I have like this little ladle and if you just skim the top, you'll skim the, the fat off. You just, but it's kind of a pain. Whereas if you refrigerate it, your stew will actually taste, um, you already put pepper in here. Your stew will taste better the next day. 
And it's really easy to just like take off the hard um, fat shell. So while we're like doing this, yes, so if Lauren can pick the three winners of this GIR set, I've got these really, really cool lids. So uh, what do you do with the leftover sauce? Uh, well, there's not a ton of sauce, so here, I'll show you guys. And I can touch the very top of this, and it's not super hot, and it's a little hot. But I think my, my hands are now... like pretty impervious to the paint. So I'm just gonna pour this on top. But there's not a ton of leftover sauce. Oh, uh, wait, no, there's no one yet. <laughs> and then I'm gonna top this with some chopped cilantro. I'm just move all this stuff. So if you, um, if yours come out chewy, is that because you uh, overcook them? No, you undercook them. Oh. So if you, they come out chewy, cook them for longer. Don't be afraid. Like, I used to be worried about overcooking um, the meat. But with these cuts that are high in collagen, like, the longer you cook it, the better it'll be. Um, you only, the reason why you're worried that you overcooked it is if you use a cut that's not high in collagen. So if you use, like, chicken breast, or something that's not really fatty. First of all, you shouldn't be making that in an Instant Pot. I think Instant Pot really is for cuts like this, like stew cuts and braises. So all I'm doing here, um, but if, yeah, if it's still kind of chewy and not fork tender, just add another five, 10 minutes, and it really will be magically soft. Oh, here's winners, okay. Um, oh, look, so Lisa, Lisa Alma uh, uh, Marcy uh, okay. Ort, and Pamela Holloway. So I think uh, Lauren is gonna contact you guys and I'll, I'll um, I'm gonna roughly chop this. And then I throw it on top. And that's all done. It's all done ready for dinner. And so people say, what do you serve it with? <laughs> and it kind of depends on what I have. So I am going to serve this. We have some cauliflower rice for me and Henry. And then I think Owen and Ollie will have some white rice. The reason why I use cali rice is because I've been testing my blood sugars. And when I eat white rice, it just totally shoots up, which makes me really sad. But cali rice to me is a good replacement. Um, and then I also blanched some broccoli earlier. So we're just gonna have some broccoli. And look, these lids are really cool. So this is what those three winners want. They want a set of all these lids. And then so, my favorite specialist. So that. is that serving bowl from Heath? This one? Wow, good eye. Yes, yes, this is from Heath. Beautiful, huh? <laughs> well, that's it. I'm, and I'm going to have broccoli, collie rice, whatever vegetable I have left. I think like stir fried bok choy is a really great accompaniment to this. Um, this is really good with like uh, fried kali rice that's made to be like Chinese fried rice. Um, but that's it, and this will serve a lot. This this is at least six servings, even though it may not look like it. Each piece is very, very satiating. So that's it. Oh, see Marcy said, oh my gosh, I'm so super excited. Yes, congratulations. Uh, let's see if there are any other comments, and then I'm gonna cut out and serve everybody dinner. Cool. Um, so uh, I think I saw a question before uh, with like how you store your cilantro. Do you wash it before you put it in the jar? I do. I rinse it because um, a lot of times cilantro can actually be pretty sandy or muddy. So I rinse it really quick um, and then I, I don't even spin it. I like shake it and I stuff it in um, like a mason jar with some water and then I loosely cover it with a plastic bag. Diane signed up for the retreat in October. <gasps> nice! Oh, so well, I've announced too. So all of you guys that are on my newsletter, uh, email newsletter subscription, um, I you know announce latest recipes, and then I've been announcing some events that I'm doing. So we're gonna have a bunch when our book launches, Ready or Not launches on August first. 
Um, but before that, oh, I already know two for sure, two events that I'm doing. So on May 20th and 21st, I'm gonna be cooking at Sunset Celebration Weekend in Sonoma, um, which I'm really excited about because there's a lot of people participating that I've always wanted to meet and I admire. So I'm really excited. And I've been a big fan of Sunset Magazine since I was a little kid because I grew up in Menlo Park and um, that's where Sunset Magazine first was started. And so then the second um, event that she was referring to that she signed up for is a paleo retreat in October in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Um, it's at a place called 1440 Multiversity. Um, which sounds amazing. It's like brand new. I think it's opening in just a month or so and our retreat is in October. I've been doing it with my friend Dr. Akil Palanasami, who is a Harvard trained uh, MD who, uh, is, who wrote the Paleovedic Diet and is into integrative medicine. So he'll do all the science stuff and I'll teach you guys about how to cook and you know make paleo a, a lifestyle. But the place sounds amazing. It's State of the art, and it's got like this. It's just a really cool retreat place. It's gonna have awesome food, and there's like yoga and meditation. I don't know. I'm excited to go, and I, 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 I think it sounds really awesome. So I think that's about it. Congrats to everybody who um, won, and I, I'm gonna put all the links to everything. Any events in Portland planned? Of course, Summer. I that is where we're kicking it off. We're gonna kick it off in Portland, I think on August 1st. Um, and then I think, we have to verify it, but then I think we're gonna come back on Labor Day weekend to have another fun event in Portland. But for sure, that is where our first event will be in Portland. Um, yes, and Melissa, it will be in Sonoma. It'll be really cool. Like, Chris Costantino will be at the Sunset Celebration weekend. A whole bunch of other people that I really think are very, very cool. Jen Jen Salas says, will it be an ebook or an actual book? An actual book, but there will be a Kindle version. Um, but the actual book, I think, is, is the way to go. Um, and so I think that's it. Thank you, everybody. Have a great Wednesday. And I'll be here again next week, uh, probably live from Portland, but I'll be cooking something from my kitchen. Bye, guys. Bye.